In this video, I want to talk about solder mask and how to properly use solder mask to get good hard results. The reason I'm making this video is because we got a comment from a viewer on our channel. Let me go over here quick. I got a comment on a recent video we did. Let me see if I can search for that comment. Solder mask. And yes, right here. The viewer commented, the solder mask is absolutely nothing like what I got from you guys. It took about half an hour to dry with a UV flashlight and it was still wet afterwards. I replied, we use the same solder mask and UV light that we sell on our site. I'll try to make a video tomorrow to explain how solder mask is used and how to get it to harden fast. User replied, that would be cool. I do believe you when you say that they are the same. I'm just not having a very good experience with mine. Like it literally stayed wet under a UV flashlight for over 30 minutes. Do you guys sell the UV flashlight? Because the one I'm using is just one that we had laying about the house. Maybe it's not really UV and I should try yours. So right now we're not even sure if the user is using UV light or purple light. Maybe he's using a flashlight that's not UV. It's not the same. You need a UV flashlight in order for the solder mask to harden. So number one is you have to make sure that the light that you are using is UV light. I have two UV lights here. I have the ones that we sell and I have a stronger one and I'm going to demonstrate the difference between both or if there is in fact any difference between both of them. Number two, the solder mask that we are selling on our website is the same one that we use in the shop here. I would not sell anything that I do not use myself. We are selling that tweezer on our website, I use it. We are selling that tweezer on our website, I use it. UV light, I use it myself. We have a board holder, I use it myself. All those items are sold on our site and the reason we sell them on our site is because I had good experience with them and that's why we decided to carry that item. The brush, hard brush from the bottom and steel, fine steel brush from the top. I use this every single day. Every repair that I do, I use that brush. It's an awesome brush and that's why we sell it on the site. The cutter, we sell it on the site. Aluminum tape, I use, we sell it on the site. So I do not sell anything that we do not use in the shop here. The solder mask that we are selling is the same one that we use. They come in a three milliliter syringe. But now recently we got a large shipment that come like this in a bottle. You open up the cap like you would with a medicine bottle. You have to press down or press to open. And then you have a fine nozzle on the top here. You do not want to squeeze that nozzle because you're going to spill a lot of solder mask. When you are working with solder mask, you only use the tip of your tweezer to get a tiny bit of solder mask and then you apply it on the board. You do not need a lot, just a tiny bit with the tip of the tweezer. I'm going to demonstrate. So I can show you how to properly use solder mask. Let me demonstrate using the syringe or the bottle. It doesn't matter. Let's open up the cap. And I'm going to grab a very fine razor blade right here. And just with the tip of the razor blade, just with the tip, I'm going to grab some solder mask. Okay. I just grabbed a tiny bit with the tip of my blade. And let's go under the microscope, just a tiny bit. Now I grab a tweezer and we can go like this. Just tap and we can apply solder mask to the area that I want to apply solder mask on. Maybe we have an exposed copper area here, I want to cover it. Or maybe we have an exposed wire that I want to cover. I apply solder mask. And now I'm going to use our UV light, the one that we sell on our site, okay? It's a powerful UV light. It's not the most powerful, but we do not need to have the most powerful, and I will demonstrate. I'm going to apply UV light. And wait. Now, the bigger the blob, the longer it will take for that blob to harden. And that's why sometimes when you are applying solder mask, you want to spread that solder mask. You do not want to apply a lot because the more you apply, the longer it will take for that blob to harden. 
So I'm going to keep my UV light for maybe 15, 20 seconds and see what happens. I do not have a timer, so I do not know how long it took, but let me just shut off the UV light. And the mask is hard. We can just wipe the surface. Okay, and as you can see, the mask is hard. The mask is rock solid, and it took about... I don't know, 20 seconds, give or take. The mask is hard. Let's say it took about 20 seconds. Now, I'm going to demonstrate using a stronger UV light. We have hours that we sell, and I have a stronger UV light here. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate using a stronger UV light. Does it make a difference? Let's go under the microscope again. And let's apply solder mask right here. I'm going to try to apply an equal amount. And let's grab our more powerful UV light, which is this one here. Okay, and you can tell the light is stronger. But what I want to show you is it doesn't make a difference if your light is more powerful, it's still going to take the same amount of time, give or take. Maybe a more powerful light can take two or three seconds less, but it's not the major factor on how fast the blob dries. Let's keep it some more so... Okay. We got the same results. Just wipe it. We got the same result. So you do not need to buy a UV light that will burn your skin when trying to harden solder mask. The one that we sell is perfect, it's powerful, and it's powerful enough to dry solder mask. Some people, I've seen some people where they have a huge UV flashlight. Why do you need a huge UV flashlight? You're going to burn your skin. You're going to give your skin a 10. It's not healthy, and it's not recommended to buy a very powerful UV light. The one that we have is powerful enough to dry solder mask. And I showed you the difference between a more powerful one and the one that we use. Same result. That's ours, and that's the more powerful one. Now, one thing you have to keep in mind, when you apply solder mask, you have to make sure that the board is clean. Let's say we have an area that looks like this, where we applied flux and we worked on this area, and I want to apply solder mask. If you apply solder mask on top of flux, you may not get good results. Let's go ahead and try that now. I want to try all options. I want to go over all options. So after watching this video, you will be an expert on how to use or apply solder mask. Let's say we applied solder mask on this area. You cleaned up the board, but you still have some flux left on the board. Okay? Apply solder mask. And let's see what happens when we apply UV light. The mask is going to harden, but because you have a residue of flux under the mask, you may not get good results. Let's wait 15, 20 seconds, like we did with the other blobs. Okay, that should be enough. Let's go ahead and clean up. And the mask is hard. Mask is hard. Look at this. I was able to remove that mask because we had a residue of flux under. So if you do not clean the board first, then that solder mask, even though it's hard, 
it's not going to be bonding properly with the board. To get a good bond on the board, make sure the board is clean. Sometimes we're not able to 100% clean the board, that's okay, but clean as much as you can so the solder mask bonds properly to the board. Now, I want to share a technique with you on how to harden solder mask in a matter of 3, 4, 5 seconds compared to 15, 20, 25 seconds. What technique do I use to harden that solder mask quickly? In the recent PS5 repair video that I did, you see me apply solder mask and within a matter of seconds, three, four, five seconds, that solder mask is hard. What technique am I using to harden that solder mask quick? Nobody shares that information with you. The technique I'm about to share with you is something a lot of technicians do not know about. apply UV light done <laughs> how long did it take two seconds three seconds and look at that solder mask look at that solder mask it's hard it took three seconds rather than 15 20 seconds so what's the secret What's the secret recipe? The answer is hot air. You use hot air along with UV light. Hot air and UV light. I currently have my hot air station set at 380 degrees Celsius. You do not want to go 400, 450 or 500 because you may end up liquefying solder on the board. So maybe a 350 temperature is good. I currently have my hot air station at 380. So you apply hot air and UV light, both. And that solder mask will harden within three, four seconds. You do not have to wait. Hot air is the secret. You apply hot air and UV light. What do you think? Let's try this one more time. Maybe I can show you the screen and what I'm doing at the same time. Open up the bottle. Take some solder mask from the very tip of this nozzle close it we're gonna apply solder mask with the tip of my tweezer I'm gonna go like this okay and I applied a lot I applied more than what we did before hot air I have it at 380 degrees Celsius I'm not going to shine my light yet. I'm going to apply hot air. Now I'm going to shine my light. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> I mean, I applied a lot. I applied the thick blob. Okay. Look at this. Let's apply it one more time. I'm going to show it to you under the microscope. So that's the secret on how you can harden solder mask fast. Let's apply. We're going to apply hot air. And now apply UV light. Done. You're welcome. That's how you properly use UV mask. UV light alone is not the answer, but use heat along with UV light. That's the secret recipe. That's what I do to harden solder mask quick. That's what I wanted to share with you today. Solder mask you can purchase off our site. The UV flashlight will be in maybe one to two weeks. We have some new items today. They will be posted on our website today or tomorrow. I'll probably go over them in a later video. We have a charging station here. And this is going to be awesome because you're going to be able to see amps being drawn by a device when I'm testing. Usually I use this amp meter here that supports both USB-C and USB. And I'm still going to be using this because it's portable. But now we have this charging station that has seven USB ports. And one of them is a QC 3.0 smart port and also a USB-C connection. On top of that, you can also wirelessly charge a device by laying that device on top of the station, right there. The screen on this one is nice. 
you're going to be able to see how many amps being drawn by that device and how much voltage is being consumed by that device. Now, if I'm working on a Nintendo Switch board, I'm able to plug the USB-C cable directly from here onto this charging station. And we're going to be able to see the voltage that is being consumed by that board as well as amperage. Let's say we have a couple of devices plugged in here. Let's say I have an iPad plugged in here. I have a Nintendo Switch plugged in here and I have an iPhone plugged in here. The screen is going to switch between all three. We're going to see the readings on this port here. After a few seconds, the screen is going to switch. It's going to show us the reading on the other device, so on and so forth. We can plug in up to eight devices or up to nine devices. Seven USB ports, one USB-C port and the wireless charging that's on top. That device is going to be awesome and I'm going to put one on the bench here. So anytime we are testing a device, we can supply power from this station and we can see voltage and amperage that is being drawn by that device. It's going to be awesome. We're going to post this on our site, maybe today or tomorrow. You can check. Next, we have this multimeter by Sunshine. I'll probably be making a review on this in the near future, but this multimeter will be posted on our site later today or tomorrow. And we have this new item from Kian Lee, blades and the handle. This is supposedly a very well balanced handle. I have not used one myself, but maybe we can open it now and see how it's like. Oh yeah, it feels good. Because they talk about how well balanced this handle is. I mean, I love the feel. The feel is amazing and you have those lines here friction when holding that handle i mean it feels amazing it feels amazing let's try one of the blades or maybe we can take a look at all the blades you get three blades per container and you have three types of blades this type this type and this type we have five containers inside this box each container has three blades let's check out this blade and this blade is used to scrape off underfill or overfill or glue or whatever the case may be. Let's go under the microscope. And the blade looks like this. Maybe we can increase the brightness. Look at the edge on that blade. Look at the edge. Okay, I do not have any underfill to test on right now. But usually what you do is you scrape off underfill or overfill or whatever. Okay, so that's one blade. But I mean, I love the feel of this. I love the feel of this handle. It feels amazing. Awesome. Let me put that blade back and try another blade. Let's try this one and you have three blades inside I mean the precision on those blades is amazing this blade in specific is used to break glue or fill from around the chips let me show you how it looks like under the microscope and look at how fine this blade is look at this Let's say we have overfill over those components and I want to remove what's in between the components here. Look at the precision of this blade. It looks something like this. I'm not sure if you ever worked on an iPad Air TriStar chip, but I do have a video or maybe a couple of videos working on that chip. I have one right here. You see how you have that glue around the chip? Now, if we heat up this chip to remove it, what's going to happen is solder is going to liquefy on all those components including the chip so when you try to pull that chip off the board you're going to end up pulling all those components along with the chip so a way to solve this issue is we use that blade to break off the glue from all four sides of the chip let's say that's the chip right here look at how precise this blade is we scrape off that glue from the side so we can detach this chip from the components this blade is perfect and finally, let's try blade number three. And this one also has three blades inside. And let's take a look and see how this one looks like. 
Okay, let's take a look under the microscope and see how this one looks like. So those blades are not cutting blades. If you want cutting blades, we do have those on our site. We have about, I think, seven, eight different types. Those blades are used for BGA work. That curved blade is used for everything, really. What else do we have? We have the magnetized, demagnetized block here. Use this to magnetize your screwdriver or demagnetize it. We have one of those on every bench. Let's say you have a screwdriver, you want to magnetize it. You just go like this. This thing is heavy, a lot of magnet. And then if you want to demagnetize it, you just go like this from the top. And the screwdriver I'm using is part of the best kit that we already have on our site. This is what I use every single day. And we have this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten compartment box. Long one, long one, long one, long one, long, long, and two long ones split in half. So we have four compartments here. That's it, we're gonna end it right here. I hope you found that solder mask technique useful. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any questions and we'll do something else in the next video.